Welcome back. We are learning different ways to ensure trustworthiness in qualitative research. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, a method which is almost used in almost all qualitative research. And this approach, this method is called researcher reflexivity. What is researcher reflexivity? So let's understand the context of it. So unlike quantitative research, where the researcher try to maintain objectivity and they sort of a distance from their research participant to collect a more objective data. So they maintain objectivity in the whole research process. In qualitative research, we don't do that. In fact, as a researcher, we are actively engaged with our research participant because we believe that knowledge is not lying somewhere. Knowledge is co-constructed, co-created when a researcher and research participant interact, come together. So the role of a researcher in qualitative research is very engaging. You are actively participating in the whole process. Now, one of the drawbacks of being actively engaged in the whole process is our own personal values, beliefs, uh, biases, uh, motivations, all these things can easily seep into the, the research process and can influence the data. So a researcher unintentionally may interpret the data in a particular way because, because of his own uh, experiences, because of his own values that he's got. We are cultural you know, people. So, so that's one of the challenge we face when we are actively engaged in the qualitative research process. So one of the ways we, 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 we suggest that bracket yourself. Bracketing means that you, you, you are mindful of your own values, your own beliefs, and when you are collecting the data, analyzing the data, you are aware of your own uh, values and, and biases and beliefs, and you try to minimize that in that process. So coming back to the researcher reflexivity, Researcher reflexivity is an approach that helps a researcher, a qualitative researcher, to be more aware of their personal opinions, biases, values, beliefs they carry. And this awareness leads to being more aware of, of their biases and sort of bracket uh, themselves from the data they are collecting. So that's called researcher reflexivity. So when we write our research report, when we write our like the research article, we have a under method section, we have a subsection as known as researcher reflexivity. And in that section, we openly acknowledge and share what might be our uh, some, some factors including beliefs or prior experiences that can influence uh, our way of looking at the data. Uh, some maybe seeping in some bias in the whole process of research. So this openness uh, is discussed uh, as, as a way to ensure high level of trustworthiness rather than assuming that oh this, uh, I'm 100% I'm, I'm objective in my process of data collection and data analysis uh, because we understand that's not feasible, that's not possible. We are not like uh, switch off, switch on animals, uh, like, you know, I can switch off my brain and then I'm completely objective or not so subjective. So it doesn't work that way. One way to achieve that is being aware and acknowledge about our prior experiences, which may influence our data collection and data analysis. 
and we call it researcher reflexivity. Another, there are other ways to enhance researcher reflexivity and one way which I highly recommend is I call it self-interview. What is self-interview? Generally it has been seen, uh, my observation is when we explore, uh, when we start our journey of uh, you know, um, understanding a phenomenon through qualitative research. Somewhere those topics that are phenomenon are, have some personal connections, you know. For instance, um, I have seen like a, a student, a former student who was a teacher and the student is interested to explore about the high level of attrition which is happening in the field, uh, in the education where teachers are leaving the profession. The attrition rate is pretty high, particularly after COVID. So being herself as a teacher, there is a possibility that the student's own experience might seep into the data collection or how she look at data or how she analyze the data. So self-interview is once you have developed your interview protocol, your questions, and it only applies in, in if I'm collecting data through interviews, which is a very common practice in qualitative research. So before I start interviewing my participants, I do, I use the same protocol to interview myself. So I can ask my a colleague or friend or, or who can interview me using the same interview questions that I'm going to use uh, for my research participant. And what it does when you yourself sit and reflect on the questions that you have developed for your research participant, it makes you more aware of your own experiences, of your own beliefs, of your own values, of your own motivations, and being more, uh, and it, it bring more awareness. And more you are aware of your own experience, the better you are uh, in terms of bracketing those experiences when you are collecting the data and analyzing the data. So self-interview, I highly recommend to develop more awareness, your own awareness about things which might influence your data collection process or data analysis process. So researcher reflexivity is an important tool. Uh, another tool that I have seen student, um, not student, researcher use sometime is they have a sort of a diary or a journal during the data collection process and data analysis process. So what they do in this diary or journal, they, they keep writing their thoughts, uh, they note down uh, their own reactions. Uh, let's say if I'm doing interview and this research participant shared something and I had an internal reaction, although I didn't say anything, but that may influence how I look at the data and my interview process overall. So I can make a note in my journal like, okay, interview, when this person said this thing, I had a reaction as if like, no, no, this is not true, you know. So my own personal prior experiences, how they are influencing this data collection process. So having a diary or journal where you can put down your thoughts, observations, your reactions, uh, that also helps you to maintain a strong uh, reflective stance while you are conducting the study and analyzing the data. So coming back, researcher reflexivity is widely used and to ensure high level of trustworthiness and the more, uh, these two ways, self-interview and diary or, or having a journal uh, really helps uh, a researcher to maintain high level of 
reflexivity which leads to high level of trustworthiness. So that's briefly about researcher reflexivity. I hope it helps and I'll see you again talking about another method of ensuring trustworthiness in qualitative research. Thank you very much.